So now let's take a look at the reactions of alkynes, and we'll start with the reduction of alkynes. We'll find out that many of the reactions for alkynes are really analogous to what we saw with alkenes. Uh, the big difference here is that we've got two pi bonds, not just one, so you might have to worry about the reaction happening two times, not just once. Uh, so we can do catalytic hydrogenation the same way we did with alkenes. With an alkene, you might recall, we use hydrogen and a metal catalyst, and that metal catalyst is usually platinum, palladium, or nickel, uh, and you just add a new hydrogen to both sides of the alkene, reducing the alkene to an alkane. Uh, we can do the same exact set of reagents, H2 and either palladium, platinum, or nickel, and it turns out this is going to add twice. And it turns out you can't really limit this reaction by just adding only one equivalent of hydrogen. It turns out it doesn't really work that way uh, in this case. So if you want to limit it to only one equivalent, it turns out we're going to have to do something special. But if you use the same reagents you use with alkenes, H2 and your metal catalyst, uh, then it's going to go all the way to the alkane. This reaction is going to happen twice. Uh, in this case, it's a syn addition, just like it was with alkenes, and because we're adding the same thing to both sides, there's no regioselectivity here to talk about, no Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov or anything of that sort, but it is a syn addition just like it was with alkenes. So as I just hinted on the previous slide, if you want to add only one equivalent of hydrogen, uh, you can't just say I'm adding one equivalent, so it turns out it doesn't work that way. But what you can do is poison your catalyst. So and there are a variety of what we call poisoned catalysts, but the one you're definitely most likely to see, and maybe the only one you're likely to see, is called Linlar's catalyst. So it turns out Linlar's catalyst is palladium metal, uh, with a little barium sulfate and some quinoline. So and I have no idea what Mr. Linlar uh, what he did to figure out that combination or how many years it took him to figure that out. Uh, but turns out if you use just plain old palladium, that's your normal catalyst. But if you put some barium sulfate or quinolone on it, maybe even calcium carbonate instead of barium sulfate, um, that's Linlar's catalyst. And in this case, it turns out it's only going to add a single equivalent of hydrogen. And it's going to be a syn addition, so you're always going to form the cis alkene if cis and trans are possible. So this makes a great question. A lot of professors love putting the following question on the test, and they'll Right, you know, start with an alkene and add H2 and Linlar's, and you're supposed to know, oh, this is a poison catalyst. Poison catalyst H2 don't react with alkenes, and so this should just be no reaction, not happening. So the reason you can end up with the alkene is that once the alkene forms, it's no longer reactive with our poison catalyst and hydrogen. Uh, so if you start with an alkene and add H2 and Linlar's, nothing is going to happen here. So once again, this is a syn addition, so mechanistically it's very similar to what we saw with our normal catalyst, and that's why it forms the cis alkene. So we'll find out in a second here that we have a way to form this, the trans alkene as well. So this is really important from a synthesis perspective. So if I can form cis versus trans, then that's something I can definitely make a point of testing you upon on the test. And obviously I don't write your test, but uh, something your professor is very likely to make sure you know the difference between forming a cis alkene or a trans alkene from your course bonding alkyne. So the alternative to using the poison catalyst and forming a cis alkene is called dissolving metal reduction, and we will form a trans alkene instead. Uh, and here the most common set of reagents here is sodium in liquid ammonia, but instead of sodium you might also use lithium or potassium in liquid ammonia as well, but sodium is definitely the one you're most likely to see, most commonly showing up in both textbooks and, and taught by professors in an undergraduate course. Uh, and in this case, this dissolving metal reduction, uh, we'll see why it forms a transalkene, is because it, it follows a completely different mechanism uh, than the syn additions with H2 and a catalyst. So in this case, sodium's got one valence electron, and we're using plain old sodium metal in the zero oxidation state here. So, and sodium's going to donate that electron here, uh, to f and then we'll do homolytic cleavage of the pi bond here. One electron goes there, we'll form a lone pair on this carbon, and then the other electron goes to the other side here, to this carbon. And so notice here when I'm moving one electron at a time, I just use these half-headed arrows. So pretty typical of radical reactions as we'll see in the next chapter. Uh, but the first time you're seeing this, so for moving one electron at a time, use half-headed arrows, not whole-headed arrows. Uh, in this case, if we kind of take a look at what this intermediate might look like here, so we'd now have an alkene, we'd have a radical on one side, and we'd have an anion on the other side. And if you look at the orbitals these are in, so it turns out this is more stable when these guys are trans to each other, when they point 180 degrees opposite from each other. So, And that's what's actually kind of governing this reaction here. So it turns out we're going to come and grab a proton with this lone pair uh, from an ammonia molecule. So if I draw in an ammonia, so this will actually come and deprotonate ammonia. So 
So we'll add an H right there. So still have this radical here. And in this case, another sodium atom is going to donate its lone pair. I'm sorry, it's a single radical electron to make a lone pair. And another anion. And then we'll deprotonate ammonia again, forming our trans alkyne. So that's why the hydrogens add trans. It really comes down to this radical anion intermediate here, where the radical and the lone pair anion electrons want to be 180 degrees apart. So that's the big deal here. Um, this mechanism. Uh, might show up on your exam. It is one that you know you're often presented with, but it's less likely than some of the others. But I did want to show it just to show you why it ends up being trans. Now, once again, uh, because you can form both a cis and a trans alkene from an internal alkyne, it's a great point to be tested upon uh, in synthesis.